Well, there's uh, there's many different types. In in theory, you could have a crossing of any of the senses. The graphene type with the colours and the letters? I believe it's called graphene colour. All my synesthesia involves colour, so that can be sound to colour, which is uh, the pitch of a note, because I have perfect pitch, sort of timbral sounds, like the tone quality, and also vowel sounds, like A, E, U, E, O, all those things. I have uh, sound to colour. The numbers, I see them as a giant ruler type thing in my head when I'm when I'm um, visualising stuff. And I also see lots of shapes with sounds and music. One form of synesthesia that's been recently reported is, uh, has been coined as mirror touch synesthesia, where if, if you see someone being touched, you actually feel that touch yourself. And then of course there's the very rare forms where the elicited experience is not colour. So uh, there are some cases where visual motion, so seeing something moving across a computer screen for example, uh, makes a sound. And I have one case for whom smelling gives sounds. So when she smells different odours, they, they generate sounds for her. Very similar to W but darker. So that one, that's an acceptable F. But that's just not. Um, uh, for instance, this is a, an orange colour, and it's exactly the same orange, say, as April, um, the left, all, all left side of my body, um, the number four, also the month of February, um, lots of things sort of share that exact same colour, although, you know, something like this, this colour. Um, purple, it's pretty exclusive to music, no months, no numbers really have a colour like that, or number three, nothing else has that colour. A little bit of both. I am a projector, which is um, quite unusual, but uh, even when not having a visual experience, I do have an associated response also. Um, I'd say I'm an associator. I don't see the things outside of me. It's only in my head. Um, when you say in your head, I don't know. Where are things when you close your eyes and imagine them? When you think about a word, I don't know whether where it is specifically. It's not a visual I say it's visual, but it's not a physically visual experience. I would say in a you know, well-lit room like this, for example, I'm an associator, but uh, if there was no other light in here, I may well be a projector. I had my first visual experiences around 18 or so. Um, it's likely I had it before then, but um, you know, never sat in the dark with enough volume to have a visual experience. Um, that would be probably six months to a year ago when my grandpa bought home an article he thought I might find interesting on Daniel Tammet, and it said he had synesthesia. So I didn't know what that was, and I looked it up on Wikipedia, and I got very excited because I you know, realised I had it. Well, I've always had it, didn't know it was a condition. And I don't know whether I'd actually specify it as a condition, really. I just think it's the way my brain works, really. Um, I mentioned it as one of those, did one of those weird quizzes, list five strange things about yourself on my journal a few years back. And um, one of those five things is, oh, I see colours with letters and numbers and stuff. And someone put up their hand and said, oh, that's a seizure. And it was more a matter of finding out that other people don't see it like that than finding out that it was a condition and I think it was when I heard it mentioned as a condition and thought condition isn't that normal so for most people it's it's just a part of the way they perceive the world um, often they uh, don't realize that they were unusual in any way. For most people, the only 
time that it interferes is when, when they come into the lab and I set up experiments where I'm looking at interference from synesthesia. Live music is just too loud for me. I've found in uh, sort of in closed venue situations, uh, the sound can be so, uh, so loud that uh, it'll trigger a visual experience and then I can't see where I'm going. It wouldn't bother me, but it would seem pretty ridiculous um, that, you know, that it's just a very bizarre, unnatural thing. Like I, I explain it like if you saw a green stop sign, it, it wouldn't, you know what it's supposed to be, but it just seems really silly. I've had incidents like um, walking past construction sites, a tile saw is so bright green that I can't, again, see where I'm walking, so I sort of have to stop and gingerly, you know, find a way away from the sound. If you asked me that last week, I'd say no. That's because I hadn't asked him, but I asked one of them during the week, and yes, my sister has it. <laughs> uh, yes, I do have an uncle who says he has it, which is a um, sort of concept spatially, and I've, I've met a couple of other people who have synesthesia. Um, a lot of them, interestingly, are musicians. it's part of it, it's not all of it. Um, I also think very visually, um, which leads me to creativity as well. Um, I think it's a whole great pile of factors, it's just one of them. It helps. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think it makes it that way, but it contributes to it. Yeah, I, I do. Um, for instance, I, I, I wrote a piece that was all the um, the sort of colours of the children's book where the wild things are and I just sort of tried to play um, the notes of all that I saw in the book. is really uh, liberating I think you know I didn't even have to really try very hard to make the piece sound good it just it really flowed. So. I always come to a theatre production in terms of what colour it's going to be, how colours are going to harmonise with each other, how um, colour and texture interacts in it and as I said what, often when I'm choosing the names in a story that I'm writing or a screenplay or something, I'll, there will be colour associated with it. There are names I like because of the colours they are rather than just because they sound pretty or they're a nice set of syllables. And I, I think the synesthesia will, um, will always be a part of my music. I'll, I'll always use it. I wouldn't go so far as to say it makes me creative, but it certainly uh, is a never-ending fountain of yeah, inspiration. Thank you.